Good luck with that. Now then, Martin Lewis is here to help you with your money worries now. Let's get straight to Amy. Hi, Hi Amy. Martin. Hello, good morning. Right, Amy Hi. says, I'm 25, my partner is 27. We are currently saving for our first house, hoping to be able to have a deposit within the next 16 to 18 months. Currently, our savings are in a joint current account. I do have a lifetime ISA with Skipton, which I forgot about until recently. To be honest, I don't fully understand it. Do you think I should mm. start saving into the ISA? If so, should I also encourage my partner to open a lifetime ISA too? Well, you're both the right age for a lifetime ISA. Now, a lifetime ISA, it, for many people, first-time buyers, is a fantastic product and is absolutely the right place to save for the simple reason that when you use it towards your mortgage deposit, the state adds 25% on top. You can save up to £4,000 a year in it. So if you max it out each year, you put in four grand in. The state adds £1,000 on top. You could have one each, so that would be £2,000 each. Now, there are some problems with it, though. You can only use it on a house worth up to £450,000. So if you're going to buy a house that's going to cost more than that, then you won't get the bonus and you would have to pay a penalty, an effective penalty of six and a quarter percent to get your money out unless you wanted to leave it to retirement. So my answer to the question depends on what house you're looking to buy. If you're looking to buy a house that will cost under four hundred and fifty grand, absolutely put your money in a lifetime ISA because you're going to get the, the bonus. Now, one really interesting thing, because you've had the Skipton open, that's actually really good. Because you have to have a lifetime ISA open for a year before you're allowed to get the 25% bonus. So your clock has already been ticking. If you put money in it now, you should be getting that 25% bonus added straight away. Um, with, with your boyfriend, oh, was it boyfriend or partner? I can't remember, sorry. Uh, 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 his partner. partner, yeah. With, with your partner, then um, he, would need, he would need to open it, or she, I'm not sure. He or she would need to open it now as soon as possible to get that clock ticking so you could put money in. So otherwise, get it out of your current account, unless you've got a specialist savings current account, which most people don't. Current accounts are the worst place to have savings. They pay nothing or diddly squat, at least put it in a top savings account. But this is my big message to anybody listening aged between 18 and 40, who is going to be a first-time buyer or one day dreams of being a first-time buyer, or maybe you're thinking about your child who's 18, 19, and 20. Put a pound in a lifetime ISA. If you haven't got a lifetime ISA or a help to buy ISA, put a pound in a lifetime ISA now. Why? Because it needs to be open a year before you can get the bonus. So stick a quid in now, and the clock has started ticking, and then when you need it, you don't have that one-year time limit. And if the worst comes to the worst, I'm very sorry, I will have lost you about six and a quarter pence, because if you wanted to take your money out, that's the penalty that you would pay. But I think six and a quarter pence gamble is worth it so that you've got a facility that could add a thousand pounds a year to your savings as a first time buyer. So if there's a parent watching this and you've got an 18 or 19 year old, just tell them to get a quid in a lifetime ISA. Moneybox is the best pair on the market at the moment. That just starts the facility, bing, and then you've got the money ready to get that bonus when you need it sooner. Yeah, very good advice. I hope that helps, Amy. Uh, Tenny says, I am under the weekly income threshold of £214.60, but when I called the helpline, I was told very abruptly that Martin Lewis was wrong, oh, that's a brave person, and that I need to be in receipt of attendance allowance, which I'm in the process of applying for and waiting for the forms to come through. I'm so confused. This, so this is about pension credit. What, what, what's the confusion uh, okay. here? Pension credit. That is a very, very annoying message to get. Yeah. And I will explain it again. I think there is a confusion here, but I'm also very unhappy to hear what the pension credit hotline has said. Mm -hmm. So let me try and explain. Pension credit is a top up to your income if you are a state pensioner on a low income. Now, for most people, it will top up your total income. And that's income not just from the state pension, from other, from other things too, to £203 a week. But in some circumstances, and they are complicated, such as carers, responsibility, disability, disabilities, attendance allowance, it, you can earn more than £203 a week as a single state pensioner and get pension credit. So I have a rule of thumb, and my rule of thumb is, if you've got total weekly income 
of under £220, it is worth checking whether you're entitled to pension credit. That's what I always say. I don't say you're going to get it. I say that's when it's worth checking. And if you are a pensioner couple with income under £320, it is worth checking. Now, you check by using the calculator online or you call the pension credit hotline. And the pension credit hotline is meant to be there, a friendly service, to tell you whether or not you're entitled. Now, I have an agreement with the pension minister that I will be pushing this men me message out because I think it's very important. The one million people who are eligible to pension credit and not getting it don't sit there and go, well, maybe it's not me, so I won't risk calling, that they have a friendly service. So to hear that someone on the pension credit hotline is saying Martin Lewis is wrong when I'm giving an agreed message and I'm being encouraged by the minister to get that message out there under this format means that they haven't got the memo. And trust me, I will be sending a memo after this program to make sure that the memo goes to those staff, that the whole point is as a nation, we're trying to work together to get some of the poorest pensioners not to be scared to ask if they are due pension credit. And this is urgent right now. Because if you get pension credit before the 19th of May, I'm trying to work out the day today, I've forgotten. I think it's the 18th but, uh, we're, we're still in... 16. Oh, my God, fast forwarding. 16. So, <laughs> so you've got two job. days left in which if you claim pension credit, if you're eligible, then you will get the cost of the first cost of living payment for this year of £301 on top of the pension credit. And pension credit is a gateway benefit to many other things. So I suspect the person on the phone is right. You checked you are not eligible. And there's nothing wrong with checking. It's a shame you're not eligible, but there will be many people watching this who are who should not be put off. What the person on that hotline, if what you're telling me is true, has done that they shouldn't have done is make you feel wrong for asking. Because the whole agreement and the whole thing we're trying to do is to encourage people to inquire. In fact, my phrase, I came up with a rhyme. It's not a good one. It's not very exciting, but it does rhyme. Don't stall, just call or get online. So don't stall, just call. And I'm very disappointed to hear the attitude of the call handler on that. They were probably having a bad day. But uh, uh, most people on the pension credit hotline I hear have really good feedback that they're really helpful. And they'll say, yes, you're entitled or no, I'm afraid you're not. So All don't right. be put off getting in touch or using the online calculator to find out if you're due pension credit. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Speak to you soon. Thanks very much. Right.